Hi, everyone. Sorry, a little bit late. We had some technical difficulties on our end, but um, if you are watching us now, I'm Sam. I'm from NATP, and I am joined today by Amy Wall, one of our fabulous instructors. Uh, Amy is going to be talking with us today about a really important topic coming down the pipeline that some of you may have already encountered, um, and that is Form 7203. But before we dive into that, Amy, um, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself so we get some some background about who you are? Sure. <laughs> There's not a ton to tell. I haven't had a real exciting <laughs> life. Um, I'm an enrolled agent in Tucson, Arizona. I just this past year retired from private practice. So I'm focusing now on teaching taxation classes. Um, I write for various tax journals, including Tax Pro Journal. And um, I've written a couple of books about taxes, cryptocurrency like that. But for the first time ever, I'm trying some fiction. <laughs> and what, what might this fiction be about? Oh, well, okay. So they say, write what you know, right? So I'm writing about, <laughs> I'm writing about a tax preparer because I think we're an underserved population, right? I mean, you read books about spies, cops, firefighters, you know, but when was the last time that you read a book about a tax preparer, Sam? That's true. Or even heard of, you know, one. Even heard of one. Yeah, <laughs> we are an underserved population. Totally. So I'm writing about a young tax preparer who's working second shift at a big box store. And she starts to have these kind of strange clients coming in. They're very pale. They're very thin. There are several years behind on taxes. They pay in cash. And she very reasonably assumes that they are from a nearby substance abuse uh, facility. But it turns out that no, actually, they're vampires. So tax preparers and vampires. <laughs> taxes, baby. I love <laughs> well, I love it. Um, <laughs> what well, I'm a fun not talk about vampires. So. No, we are not. Yes, yeah, so we'll jump right in. Um, Amy, so <laughs> I'm still laughing. <laughs> I know I'm still laughing about this. This is going to be a good book. I'm just yeah. Oh yeah. Put that out <laughs> there. <laughs> um, so we mentioned before we're talking about Form seventy two o three. Right. Tell us a little bit about the history of this form. This is a new form. Um, what do we need to know, the, yeah. the gist of yeah. it? So it, it's actually the end result of something that started back in 2018. In 2018, the IRS announced five compliance campaigns, one of which was S-Corp distributions. And when they announced a compliance campaign, it, it's basically the IRS saying, pretty sure you guys aren't doing it right. Pretty sure we're losing tax dollars because of it. Pretty sure we're going to do something about it. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so that's how this thing started. So last year, um, those of you out there who did anybody who was a, a 1040 uh, client who had an 1120 SK1 and was taking a loss, you had to attach a PDF showing the IRS that the stockholder had enough basis to take the loss. So that was just step one. Okay, and some of us kind of thought the IRS was going to end it there, but no. But no, Form 7203 is a giant step forward in terms of uh, ensuring S-Corp shareholder compliance. Because now, it used to be we just attached a PDF if there was a loss. But now, we also have to file Form 7203, yes, to take the loss of the S-Corp. But also, if the shareholder received any principal payments on a loan to an S-Corp, and if the shareholder sell, sold any S-Corp stock, and if the shareholder had any distributions from the S-Corp. So four reasons we're gonna to have to file this form, taking a loss, receiving distributions, receiving a loan repayment, or selling the stock. And I point out, this is a form that's attached to the 1040, not to the 1120S. Which is interesting for this year too, on top of everything else that, that tax preparers are dealing with. Yes. <laughs> um, so this is, Truly the first time, though, someone might be seeing this is when when it pops up, um, you know, as they're doing their clients returns. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's a brand new, never before seen the light of day form. Uh, and there are definitely some things here that are going to be tricky for tax preparers. Uh, different software packages, I think, are going to handle this very differently. Uh, I spoke with someone a few days ago who said that her software didn't pull up the form, even though the taxpayer had received a distribution from the S Corp and she put that information into her program and receiving distributions is one of the triggers 
uh, for filing the form. So I suggested pull it up, do a bunch of overrides and file it. She said the software didn't give her that option. So what does that mean for her moving forward? Does that mean the IRS is going to eventually send a letter saying, hey, you got a distribution. Where's Form 7203, which we told you we need? Because the IRS gets a copy of the K-1. So the IRS is going to know that distributions were made. Uh, they're no, they'll know the form should have been filed. The fact that the software didn't pull it up for the IRS is going to sound like like a personal problem, <laughs> right? right. But another question is, even if your software does pull up the form as it should, how much of the form is going to be autofilled and how much of the form is the tax repair going to have to fill out by hand? Even if you did the 1120S return, will your software autofill from the 1120S return because mm -hmm. it should have all the information there? Uh, or is it just not going to make that connection? At, at this point, we don't know. It, it just hasn't been around long enough. And, you know, the S-Corp returns aren't due until March 15th. So we've got a few weeks yet before we have to really worry about this. Um, but I think we have to be prepared to do overrides as necessary. Just because the software hasn't been updated doesn't mean we don't have an obligation to file it. Yeah. And from your experience as a, you know, doing this as a profession, um, is that, is that a big extra step that tax preparers are going to take? Is it just something that they need to be aware of? Yeah, it's it's going to be challenging because the fun part of all this. Uh, so Form 7203 is it's essentially a basis worksheet and it uses that basis information to calculate um, any taxable portion of the distributions, et cetera. The problem is, is that we have a lot of escort clients who have no idea what their basis is. They assume somebody's tracking it. OK, it's actually the shareholder's responsibility. It's not the responsibility of whoever's doing the S Corp return. OK, which we all wish was the case, but it's not because then we'd have somebody to blame. <laughs> it's, <laughs> <right>? it's the shareholder's <laughs> responsibility, which typically, since they're clueless, it means it's our responsibility as 1040 preparers to track their basis. Um, and it's a problem because we may not have the slightest clue what their basis is. S corps have been around since 1958, 1958. So we have potentially some very old S corps out there that have never tracked basis. So, you know, I know I've had clients who came in with, you know, 20 year old S corp return and they had maybe five years of back taxes, maybe. And I'd say, Hey, what's your basis? And they'd say my what? <laughs> oh gosh. And, yeah. And, and we'd be off and running. So I would take the far back as I could go calculate you know reconstruct basis as much as i could but you know was it perfect was it ever going to be perfect <laughs> you yeah. know we do the best we can do as in with so many other subjects in tax world we do the best we can do we go as far back as we can we do the best that we can but we have to remember the irs has a policy which is that if you cannot prove basis your basis is zip zippity doo da, nothing. That's going to have to be our default position, okay? If all else fails, basis is zero. And zero basis can end up costing the taxpayer big bucks. Uh, I will just add, NATP is planning to offer a webinar on basis reconstruction later this year. Uh, and that subject is now, it's always been important. It's now more important than ever before. Yes. So I, we look forward to that with great interest. Yes. Um, and so something, uh, another little caveat too, you're going to be teaching a webinar on this, Amy, um, Form 7203. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. And it's going to go a lot more in depth. But right now, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to pull up the form. Yeah, yeah. Let's go pull up and go through. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fun, so, fun forms. <laughs> yay. Always an adventure. I am pulling this yeah. up. I'm going to bring it up and... I will say in the webinar, we're going to go through it in great detail. Okay. I can see it on my screen here. All right. So go to the top, Sam. There we go. Okay. So it's two pages and three parts. So that starts with just a header, the usual stuff, shareholder name, social, escort name, EAN. But notice there's room for only one. I'm sorry. I'm looking away, but I'm pointing the form. There's room for only one name there. You don't see taxpayer and joint. You just see one name. And the reason for that is that one of these has to be used for anyone who's a shareholder. So if there's a husband and wife and they're both shareholders in the S Corp, there's going to be two of these forms. We don't get to just add it all together. So each spouse is going to have their own basis, their own share of losses, their own distributions, and so on. So that's the first thing to know. Then you see part one. 
starts with the shareholder stock basis at the beginning of the year, which is the same as the end of last year, assuming you know that, right? And then it adds in all these things that increase basis, income, interest, dividends, royalties, capital gain, passive gain, things like that. Then we subtract a few things. Can you follow along here? Are you good? Yeah, then we, then we subtract a few things that decrease basis. Distributions is usually the big one. Uh, Non-deductible expenses, depletion for oil and gas, business credits. And then we're stopped. So look at line 11. Okay, so line 11, um, it says enter the amount from line 47, column C. Well, line 47 is on part three. <laughs> and I haven't gotten to that yet, right? Yeah, part three. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far. So so now I'm stopped. Okay. So then go back, go back to the bottom of page one. So I'm gonna stop and but then I'm gonna continue on with the bottom of page one. So remember, so this is shareholder debt basis. So remember that a shareholder has two kinds of basis, stock basis and debt basis. They're calculated separately, they're maintained separately, they're handled separately, okay? Debt basis only comes into play if our shareholder has loaned money to the corporation, okay? If that never happened, we get to skip part two. But if that has happened, then what you see at the bottom of page one there is you get to have like a list of the loans that the shareholder has made to the S Corp, okay? So this is gonna track the loans, gives us room for three, but you attach a paper if there's more. And it's gonna track the principal repayments made during the year, and it's gonna tell the IRS if it's a formal note or an open account debt, and I go into the difference in, in the webinar. Okay, go to the top of the second page. Yeah, a little bit, there we go. Okay, good, 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 okay. So section B of part two, all right, which is the top of the second page, tracks the shareholder's debt basis. It's gonna handle a couple of issues. It's gonna track debt basis restoration if any has been made. It's gonna figure out if there's any loan repayments that were actually return of principal, non-taxable or restoration of debt basis, which is taxable income. But then I get to line 30. Yeah, and it has once again, I'm stopped because I haven't filled out line 47, which once again is in part three. So you fill out some of part one, you fill out some of part two, then you go to part three. Part three is where we calculate the shareholders allowable loss and, de and deductions that they're gonna be allowed to take for this tax year. Here's where the rubber meets the road in terms of how much of a loss our shareholder gets to take on his 1040 and how much is gonna carry forward to the following year. So part three lists all kinds of losses and deductions, business loss, real estate loss, capital loss, section 1231 loss, section 179 uh, deductions, charitable contributions, all sorts of goodies. We add them up and that turns out to be the line 47 that parts one and two have been waiting for. <laughs> so once we get through with this, we go back to parts one and two, finish those up and then at long, long last, I have my ending stock basis, which is then going to be the beginning stock basis for next year, the beginning, the ending debt basis, which will be the beginning debt basis for next year, and the amounts of any carry forwards. And if you just got the feeling that this is pretty complicated, you'd be right. <laughs> so you see the form house is jumping around quite a bit. Part one, stop, part two, stop, part three. Then go back to part one, go back to part two. <laughs> I will tell you the only way I could make sense out of it, I was reading the instructions and I was like, oh. so I started going through with just examples, just numbers. You know, I printed the form and mm -hmm. then I just started filling it out myself. And then it was like, oh, okay, now, now I get it. So you can see why we're all hoping that our software is going to do at least some amount of auto filling for us, because this is a lot to do by hand. Even no if you have all the information, all the numbers at your fingertips, this is a time consuming little deal. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you said you filled it out yourself already. Um, what can you, you know, d just give a little bit of insight as to what some of the most difficult parts were? Um, was it well, the jumping around? Was it the information needed? Yeah, for it's, it's, it was figuring out, you know, it's like, like a lot of IRS forms, very circuitous, do this, then go here, then come back, then do this, and then, and then you know, a lot of IRS forms are, are built like that. It's just such a complicated process. It's really not linear. Um, 
so I think that the big issue is just going to be getting the information. I think anybody and anybody can find their way through the form, especially if your software at least do the addition and subtraction for you. That would be a nice, a nice step. Um, so what we're going to do in the webinar is we're going to go through the examples because I think that's going to be a good way um, for people to get a feel for how this is going to work. Because remember, this isn't going to just be for people who do S-Corp returns. This is going to be for any uh, anyone who does 1040s who has an S-Corp shareholder as a client, which is pretty much a lot of us. Um, in the webinar, I'm going to talk a lot about basis. There's going to be people in, in the group who know a ton about basis. There's going to be people who know a little. And there's going to be people who haven't been exposed to it at all. So I'm going to start by trying to level the playing field uh, at least just enough that the form makes sense, how basis gets created, how it gets increased, how it gets decreased, the difference between stock basis and debt basis. Because if you don't have at least some familiarity with the concept of stock and debt basis, then form 7203 might as well be in, you know, I don't know, ancient Persian or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we're going to walk through the form line by line. We're going to show i'm going to show everyone here's where you get the numbers if you got a k1 here this number goes here this number goes here this number goes here i'm trying to just you know i feel like okay i've done the work for you let me make your life a little bit easier um also by the one by the way the 2021 k1 for s corps is a little bit different from the 2020 k1 mm. so just so no one's caught by surprise i'm going to show here it was last year's version here's this year's version. It's a little, no it's a little bit different just so no one's taken by surprise Excellent. Lock through it with a couple of, I think, pretty simple examples, which I'm hoping is going to lock it in for everybody. Uh, the webinar is 50 minutes long, and then I'll just, you know, hang out for as much time as I can afterwards and answer any questions that I can answer. Like I say, it's brand new form. <laughs> we don't totally know how the IRS is going to go with it. So, uh, so that's the plan. That's the which plan. Which is wonderful. And the webinar is next week. It's open to all tax pros, um, which is so wonderful too. You know, just this information that really should everyone needs to know like you said you know, yeah. Don't be, um, surprise, be forewarned yeah yes yeah. and so we have the link if anyone is interested in that um in the comments on this video um but you know before before i let you go any is there anything else that you want to add about this form about tax season about um <laughs> <laughs> i know you have some thoughts there i'm participating but my heart is with all of you <laughs> done that not my first rodeo exactly it will be fun class it's only 50 minutes long uh, i think it's really well worth it so that when the form does pop up or you recognize you have to file it that it's not this huge shock you'll look at it and think oh yeah remember she said you know it's going to be so much easier if you've had at least this introduction absolutely yep. and you can call me later sam we'll talk about vampires yeah, <laughs> sounds wonderful. We'll post that link too. Absolutely. Um, so thanks again, Amy, for taking some time. My pleasure. With Always this my pleasure. Afternoon. You, like I said, you're just a wealth of knowledge, and it's um, really you're really valuable <laughs> part of the team. Um, and so thanks for everyone for watching. If you have any questions, comment on this video, um, or email us, or you know, get a hold of us any other way. Um, and make sure to sign up for that webinar next week. It's we're adding a third session since the first one filled up already due to popularity. Um, and it's such an important topic and who wouldn't want to spend more time with Amy, of oh. course. <laughs> so um, make sure to sign up for that. And um, otherwise, that is all we've got for you today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And we'll see you, you next time. Bye. Bye.